Okay, let's go ahead and do an example here where we are interested in doing a one sample a hypothesis test with respect to a mean. Okay, so let's read our scenario. It says that Jane was not satisfied with her results uh, from our proportions test. Uh, so thinking upon it, she may have captured individuals who only work out five minutes every day and have excluded people who work out for an hour every day except the weekends. To get another look at her question, she decided to instead ask, how much time do you work out each week? She asks Student Health again and finds that they have, uh, let's put it, it as, it as 2.25 hours per week. She thinks that this is actually too low. She decided to test this time at an alpha of 0 0.07. So she rounds up a random sample again of faculty and students at Casper College, and her data is provided. All right, so let's go through our steps. Data type is numerical. We're dealing with time. That's a actual measurement, numbers. We're not dealing with categories, so numerical. Number two, population and parameter. Our population is faculty and students at Casper College. Our parameter of interest is the true mean, um, true mean number of hours spent exercising or we'll say working out because that was our question working out each week okay so we've done that let's state our hypotheses the null hypothesis is our baseline so now we say that mu or the true mean number of hours spent working out each week for faculty and students at Casper College is equal to 2.25 hours how did we get that? We got that because it's what she got from student health. That's our baseline assumption. So let's do our alternative hypothesis. Here, mu, sorry, mu is, okay, does she think it's greater than, less than, or not equal to? She thinks that that is actually too low. So she thinks that the true mean is actually greater than 2.25 hours. Okay, and our alpha level, alpha, is equal to 0 0.07 which means that our confidence level is equal to sorry confidence level is equal to uh, 1 minus that which is 0 0.93 okay great we need to identify now our test equation and if we should even do the analysis all right well let's come over here what am I testing? This time we're dealing with numerical data. We're dealing with means. How many? We're still just dealing with one. She's just looking at the true mean number of hours by fact, students and faculty. Okay. So is it normal? Okay. Well, this is our question that asks, like, should we even do our test? Well, let's go look at the data. We know we don't know if the original population is normally distributed. There's nothing in the data that says that it should be. And so then we just need to look at our sample size. And is it above 30? We scroll down. It looks like that we have like in the 50s for a number of observations taken. So it doesn't say so, but we've got a big enough sample size. So by the central limit theorem, we can ask our next question. Do we know the population standard deviation or is the standard deviation a part of a sample? Here, we don't get anything. It doesn't tell us anything about any type of standard deviation. So we can calculate it from our uh, raw data. So that is going to be S, that the standard deviation was calculated. After the sample was chosen, we are going to be using S. So now we've got our test um, equation. And we will modify this is for if we were doing a two-tailed test for confidence interval. But we can modify it for a confidence bound. Okay, so yes, we found our, conf our test equation and we should do the analysis because we have a big enough sample size. So we can do analysis. N is greater than 30. Great. All right, so now it says calculate the test statistic and p-value. 
Okay, so here if we look over at our equation, we've got some things that we need. We need to know the hypothesized mean, the sample standard deviation, the sample size, and the sample mean. Well, let's go ahead and import our data. So we're going to do data, import, we'll do an Excel file. We'll call this, I'll just call mine hours. I want to click it OK. And go back and still open up that file again. I'm going to open it up. And you can choose the sheet again. This one is on the mean sheet. I'm going to click OK. And then I want to click View Data Set to make sure that it's right. And yeah, it's my hours exercising guy. We're good to go. So I'm going to close out of here. All right, so first things first is I'm going to do this two separate ways, just like I did it in the proportions video. I'm going to both calculate this by doing it with the uh, like hand calculations and also do it by using our commander to its full potential. Okay, here we go. So first things first, I want to go to statistics. I need a summary and let's go to numerical summaries. Okay, so it says pick your variables. We're doing the hours exercising or hours working out. Statistics, I don't need the quantiles or the interquartile range. I do need the mean. I do need the sample standard deviation, but check this out. It'll also calculate out the standard error. Over here in this equation, the standard error is the entire thing in the denominator, s divided by the square root of n. Awesome, let's use it. So we're gonna click okay. And then come over here and check this out. I've got my mean, I've got my standard deviation, I've got my standard error, and I've got my n. Now, if you notice here, like the the decimals aren't a lot. It gives you some, but a lot of times we want more. We can type in a quick little line. We can type in options, uh, digits equals, and then we can type how many digits we want. I'm going to type in 12. It's a little obnoxious, but it will help us out. So I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to come back. And I'm just going to run this line of code again. So I'm going to just run my number uh, and the summary and we're just going to click submit and check that out i extended out my decimals so that i don't have to deal with like rounding errors uh, which is great so i'm going to say that uh, x bar is equal to i'm just going to copy this mean and paste it and hit enter and check it out it pops up right over here perfect i'm going to do s equals and that's this standard deviation Enter. And then we're going to do standard error equals this guy. And then I'm going to do n. And I'm going to say n equals 57. And there we go. Okay. So if we notice here in our equation, we also have this extra little thing. We've got this n minus 1. You're like, hey, what the heck is n minus 1? n minus 1 is our, our degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom are calculated by saying just equals n minus 1. And I'm going to hit enter and puts up my degrees of freedom. While I'm at it, let's just put up alpha, uh, which we said equals 0 0.07. That's handy. And we can put up the confidence level if we want it equals 1 minus alpha. And now I've got my confidence level as well. Okay, so I'm starting to get a bunch of stuff over here. I'll try to keep it so that we can see it all, the values that I'm working with. Okay, so now the question is, well, can I calculate out my test statistic? So my test statistic is this t-score. I need to calculate it out. Well, we've got all the pieces now. So we're going to say just that t equals, we'll do x bar minus, oops, we don't have mu yet. Back up. Let's do mu naught. This is the hypothesized mean. This is what they gave us from student health. And we said that that was 2.25. Okay, now we've got it. Here we go. T equals x bar minus mu divided by, I could do standard deviation divided by the square root of n, or I can just do standard error. And let's see if it both works. So if I hit, oh, sorry, it's not mu, it's mu not, and I hit enter. Okay, and it gives me a t value of 2.25. 9.3. I'm reading it from right here. Let's see if we did this again, but instead of using SE, we used S divided by square root of N. Now let's hit enter for that guy. 
and check it out. It's the exact same thing. I think there was a tiny change way out here, just a little bit of a rounding error because of um, copying and pasting these values, but they're the same thing. So we're going to go back to the standard error one, and I'm just going to hit enter. Okay, there we go. So we've got our T, we've got our, uh, we've got like all our pieces now. Now we just need to, let's go back over here and we'll actually type out our T value. So T equals, this is our test statistic, we'll do 2.9344. Now we just need our P value. P value equals, now we need to figure out how we calculate this. Well, we can calculate this P value uh, by shoving in this T score into the, uh, oh, into our uh, probabilities. So what we can do is we're going to, oh, I can't copy it there. Well, okay, T, I can copy it here. Say copy. We'll go to distributions, continuous. We're dealing with a T distribution now. We're going to deal with T probabilities. And we need to put in the variable values, paste. That's the T value that we need to put in. The degrees of freedom that we're dealing with. Okay, degrees of freedom are 56, or N minus 1. And we need to know, are we doing a lower tail? Or are we doing an upper tail? This is all dealing with how the null hypothesis is stated. If we think it's the lower tail, we need to, or if we think it's less than, we say lower tail. If we say greater than, we want the upper tail. So let's go ahead and click on the upper tail. And then I'm going to click OK. And it gives me this p-value. So I'm just going to say p-value equals, let's copy this guy, and let's paste it in. And now I've got my p-value. So we can say p-value is equal to 0 0.0024. Um, 0 Great. All right, so we've got our test statistic. We've got our p-value. Now we just need to reject or fail to reject. So we know that the p-value, we are comparing it to alpha. We need to know, is this bigger, smaller uh, than alpha? Is our p-value bigger or smaller? And here, if we look at our alpha value is 0.07, this guy is 0.0024. So our p-value is less than alpha. So we reject the null, or that's the same thing as saying the reject H naught. Okay, so now we need to write a conclusion. Okay, now we can put our pieces together. We can say that um, Jane collected sufficient, sufficient evidence. And here we need to put in like our alpha, alpha equals 0. 0, 07 comma p value equals uh, 0 0.0024 so that's just showing that our p value is less than alpha remember if you just say sufficient evidence and you give the alpha level everybody knows that it means that the p value is less than alpha i like this because it's a little explicit all right jane collected sufficient evidence alpha and the p value to reject the claim that students and faculty uh, on average or here we'll let's rearrange this a little bit that the true mean time that students and faculty spend exercising exercising each week is sorry equal to uh, 2.25 hours and and conclude that sorry faculty at, I gotta say where we're at because we need the correct population. Casper College. It's 
spend exercising each week is equal to 2.25 hours and conclude that they, in fact, spend more time exercising. Okay, so here we've got our conclusion. This is conclusion. Jane collected sufficient evidence to reject the claim, so we're rejecting the null, and here's the null, that the true mean time that students and faculty at Casper College spend exercising each week is equal to 2.25 hours, include that they in fact spend more time exercising. Now we need the post hoc, post hoc confidence interval slash bound. Okay, and here we go. Let's type it out. So she can say that Jane is, okay, we would say 93% confident that the true mean number of hours spent exercising by Casper college students and faculty is greater than and now we need to actually calculate this out because we didn't do it yet so let's come back over here okay so we we have basically everything that we need but we're since we're just looking at greater than we need to find a lower bound so we can say hey, we're 90 percent or 97 sorry three percent confident that we are greater than some value so let's figure this out we need to do a couple of things first first things first we need to find out the t critical we need to do a t critical remember when we do the confidence intervals we go look at the quantiles so we've got t distribution we're going to go to quantiles so we need to put in a probability here all right so what we're going to put in is we're going to put in our alpha level 0, 07 degrees of freedom 57 and we want we can say an upper tail because we're dealing with um with values to the the right we said greater than okay and we can just go ahead and click okay and here we go we've got 1.49 etc etc well let's just type that in as t crit t crit equals let's copy this guy and paste it in and we've now got t critical well, i'm running out of space i've got one more thing that i need in here Okay, last thing that we need to do, we need to do our confidence bound, and we can say upper. All right, this is equal to x bar minus, oh, sorry, this is a confidence bound lower, because we want to say that we're greater than it. Okay, x bar minus uh, t crit times, and the standard error, se. Hit enter, and there it gives our lower bound, 2.82. Okay, so now we can come in and write our confidence interval out. It is greater than, we can just put it in here, we found the lower, 2.82 hours. Okay, and there's a confidence interval. So like as soon as we make our conclusion where we can say that it's you know, greater than, in this case we say greater than mu, greater than the 2.25 hours, immediately somebody asks, is going to ask, well, how big do you think it is? And Jane would then with the confidence interval be able, or the confidence bound, be able to say that, hey, I'm 93% confident that the true mean number of hours spent exercising by Casper College students and faculty is in fact greater than 2.82 hours. That's excellent. It can give them both reject the original claim and give a starting point for where we think that the true mean actually is. Okay, so we did this big walk. We figured out our confidence bound lower. We found our test statistic. It was a lot of work though. There's a much easier way. So now that we have our data in, we can just go to statistics. We're dealing with means. 
Let's just do a single sample t-test. Click on it. All right, we're going to do hours exercising. We're going to say that we think that the true population mean is actually greater than the baseline. The baseline was 2.25 hours. And the confidence level, we're going to set that at 0.93. All right, check how easy this is. This is like our just baseline information before we did any calculations. Now we can just click OK. Come back over here and let's see how we did. All right, so our X bar was 3.4228, 3.4228. Our T was 2.9344. Let's look at our T that we calculated. We got 2.9344. We're doing good p-value. 0 0.0024, 0 0.0024, confidence interval. Okay, now they wrote it as an interval. Remember, you can always write a confidence interval as confidence bounds if you just put one of the extremities as like infinity or negative infinity. So that's what they did. Let's see how our uh, confidence bound lower stacks up. We did 2.8246, 2.8246, 2.8246. And it looks like it's just a little bit different out here. Okay, so if we look at this, uh, we can notice that I actually made a tiny error. So if we look at this, when we shoved it through our commander, we got the finally the confidence interval of 2.824486. And we look up here, we got 2.82463 and it took me a second to realize what happened so if we look up here we got the degrees of freedom wrong the degrees of freedom are 56 not 57 so let's just go back just like two steps real quick let's first of all let's we've got to fix up our confidence well i mean when we round to two decimals, it's going to be the same. But I want to show you that these two methods will get you the same value. All right, so we need to go to distributions. We need to go to T and the quantiles. We had everything right here, except this needs to be 56. All right, and click OK. So now we want this to be T crit equals. We're just going to write over what we had before. We'll paste it there. Hit Enter. And we're going to rerun this guy. And now we hit enter. And now these two methods got the same. So we got 2.824486, 2.824486, etc. Like it really does work. And I mean, you saw like it, even I, when I go through these hand calculations, it's, there are so many steps, it is really easy to make a simple error. Whereas if I take, if I just shove the raw data through and let our uh, commander do it, it's much more likely to come out with the correct answer. So anyways, long and short is just go ahead and do it by shoving the data through our commander. It's much easier and I'm much more interested instead of can you go through and do all these calculations can you get these conclusions correct? Because that's what's important. Can we take the data that we have, calculate out values, and then determine what should we do with the data, and can you explain that to me? So anyhow, that's how we would do this with numerical data from top to bottom for all of our steps, and I hope that that helps you out. And please use our commander. It will save you a lot of time. And if you have any questions, please contact me. Good luck.